to the news review. Benjamin is in the studio and Dr. Kwame Asasanti will be joining us shortly. So let's get into the news review. Hi, Ben. Well, good morning. Good morning. Here we are again. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, time yeah. now for the news review. Mm. And uh, I don't know, I guess it's a, it's a bit stylish this morning. Yeah. How we're going about the segue between the news yeah. and uh, the news review. But welcome aboard. Uh, time now for us to hit the newspapers. And uh, courtesy of Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic, we bring you this segment every weekday. And today, as always, they are offering you prostate screening for free if you're a man, fertility screening for free if you're a woman. Just reach out to them at any of their branches. Let's start from right here in Accra. They are Spintex opposite the Shell signboard, Kumase, Kronomabwe here behind the Angel Educational Complex. There's Takradi Anaji State, Tema Community 22, Techiman Hanswa, and Esiaman Zama. Their call lines 0244 867 068 or 0274 234. 3, 2, 1. End point homeopathic clinic, the end to chronic uh, disease. Shortly, we'll be joined by Dr. Kwame Asasanti. Today being a Wednesday, of course, uh, he's a political scientist and also director of the Center for European Studies at the University of uh, Ghana. Well, right before we get into the papers, though, uh, between yesterday and today, quite a number of things have happened. Some of the papers capture some of these happenings. But this whole bit about people losing their genitalia, <laughs> men. I find it rather absurd. And it, it's closer yeah. than you think because someone close to this establishment got beaten for nothing. It's that almost as though someone could target you and just say, hey, you've touched me and my thing. Who checks to see whether the, the person's, you know, genitals are there or not? And all of a sudden, people pounce on this person and beat yeah. the person up. In a video I saw, the man was holding his geni genitals and saying that, make it come back, make it come back. And he had bruises all over his face. It means that the boy was beaten to a pulp because I he's allegedly made their, you know, genitals vanish. I mean, <laughs> this is where I'll be like, oh, you're suggesting this. Okay, so let another man inspect to be sure that your genitals are not there. I mean, what, I mean, pardon me, this is, this is, this is stupidity. Ah. I'm sorry. It, yeah. it is sheer stupidity. This whole bit about, and you know, nine pe people have been arrested, arrested yes. over this because it is false. And apparently their genitals were in, were, were in place. Nothing was lost. I, so... I heard of this young man, someone I actually personally know, beating to a pulp in Choco. Oof. You know, the claim that he attached someone and who checks that, look, the person's genitalia or genitals are no longer there. I mean, what kind of thinking is that? It's so backward. It's so uncouth. And we should stop that. People are getting beaten. You know, this trend is not the first time. It, no. It's been happening, you know, once in every few years. You have this thing come up and then people go like, oh, me baby, yeah, you are, or something. But where's the proof? Because, so someone could just, you know. Did you say once every year? This once like every, every few it. years. Okay, That's what I said. Right. Uh, um, so basically someone who has it out for you, mm. maybe the person doesn't like you mm. or something, could just, they know that, oh, maybe at this time of morning, you go and board a vehicle going home. They also come and say, hey, you've touched me. And mad and I, you're right. And then people start beating you. I mean, and this whole bit, let me just say, per the law, this whole bit about mob justice, whether even the person is an armed robber or whatever, you have no right to do that. The person has rights. So even if you think, even if you think the person has done something like that, grab the person. Take the person together with the purported victim to a police station and let the matter be dealt with. This bit, you remember Major Mahama. Mm. The same way that case was treated. If you go and do this to someone, whether the person dies or not, because there's assault, there's battery, you could, be, you could find yourself on the wrong end of the law and you would have no one else to blame. Oh, Obise, Nibi, 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 and I mean, so me kobu, Nibi. Asem toa, ebe yo, wanwa. Anyway. That's just one, one thought mm. in there. And uh, the Daily Guide has a story. Four more in court over missing people. You know, this country, sometimes I don't get, I don't get, I don't know whether, I'm sorry I'm being this hard this morning, but I don't know whether it's a lack of education or whatever, but how do you just get up and say, you know, my genitals are no longer there. Someone touched me and that's why. Who is checking to prove? How can we act like this? Anyway, my thoughts, my thoughts on that. Yeah. So I, I can't even wrap my mind around it like going around and some you know you know why i'm so upset why someone within these circles got beaten brutally badly beaten 
because just just he same thing and he, the, the person claimed he was, okay which was false oh that's sad and that's what i was saying in choco mm. and i'm not trying to castigate the people of choco but that's where it happened anyway, anyway. <laughs> let's bring in dr kwame asasanti yeah. doc good morning hello doc if you can hear me yes i can hear you top good of morning. the morning to you i hope you're well i'm very well very well and yourself ah uh, it's been quite a morning this morning i am more tired than usual i think at some point one of these days i'm going to have to take a break uh, this machine of the body uh, needs some oiling and uh, we'll mm. see to that we'll see to uh, that i don't know whether you followed what i was just sharing a short while ago though in terms of people claiming the men especially that their penises were getting missing and people getting beaten when in fact you would go and check and nothing had happened to this person nine people earlier now four more are in court over this saga and someone close to us actually got beaten a few days ago in choco um, i don't know whether you have any reactions but if not then you can share with us what you have for us today um it's unfortunate that uh, we are in that uh, type of situation um the good news is that the security people, I trust them, they will deal with that. They will deal with that. Um, but we need um, a whole lot of things um, uh, to be fixed to make sure that uh, these things uh, get, uh, you know, curtailed or nipped in the bud. Not mm. even curtailed, nipped in the bud. Uh, it's unfortunate. Um, if you look at <clears throat> uh, last... Um, a few, uh, P I think it should be a week ago, uh, when Mr. Alan Chamateng went to church uh, for the Easter program. Right. You recall. Right. Uh, he made a statement to the effect yeah. that uh, Christians, uh, yeah. they need uh, somebody to be elected. The Christians should elect a Christian leader and all that. Um, I find it worrying, a worrying situation that I must say that I have great respect for Mr. Chiramating and uh, his pers personality and his contribution uh, to the development of this country. I have no doubt that he has paid his dues and that he is a very honest man. But I'm sorry, the statement he made uh, doesn't resonate with, uh, you know, followers of democracy, right? Uh, this country. Uh, it is true that Christians are in the majority. Uh, there are other people who profess other religious faith. They are in there. I myself, I am a very traditional person. All right. Uh, there are people who are Muslims and uh, the rest of them. We all matter in the scheme of things of democracy in our country. Uh, so when you speak on that lines, then you are saying that in effect that uh, and first, uh, the implication is that you, you believe that all Christians uh, will vote for you. That is not true. <laughs> the fact that we all fellowship at a place, the fact that we are all Christians, uh, we have our different beliefs. We have people that we want to vote for, for a very good reason. All right. That is one. Two, you are polarizing the existing uh, polarized, already polarized society. And it's not good news, no. Uh, the best we can do all the time to put our people together. It's ideas, a contest of ideas. So you should be able to develop ideas that will resonate with people and the people will give their vote, but not to divide them along religious lines. It's not good enough at all. Uh, because my question to him is that, yes, after you have won power, even Christians vote for you. Uh, what about Muslims, traditional people? Would you go to them for tax to run the affairs of the state? You must as well say that Christians give me tax and then the rest of the people can go to sleep. I'm not going to tax them. But it's not possible. You can do that, right? These are things that divide, divide the society the more. So with all due respect, I believe that he should not cross the line anymore, right? He owes us an apology on that. I've heard some he, of the He owes us an defend. apology? Yes. Mm. Yes, I have heard people who try to justify that, defend him, but those people are as guilty as himself. All right, what he said is nothing but what uh, it's in Baptist. 
and it shouldn't come from somebody like him. I, 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 we don't want to see that. Because if everybody is supposed to what, uh, take the line that he has taken, at the end of the day, you see this country is divided along certain political, uh, religious lines. This is what you recall, you and I read in Ghanaian politics in the 1950s, where political parties were formed along religious lines. Mm. And we can talk about Muslims Association Party, whose interest was to cater for people living in Zongos and Muslims and nothing more, nothing else. Mm. That was unfortunate. We had groups such as what? Angono Youth Organization, whose interest was to protect not only, not Evers, but what? Only Angonos. And that was also unfortunate. We have, uh, you know, the Northern, like Northern People's the Northern Party, People's Party mm. whose way interest was to cater for the, the people of the North and other regionalist party. And remember, all these things uh, uh, found expression in the 1958 when Nkrumah passed the Avoidance of Discrimination Act. You, you, you know that. Mm. And that is to say that we don't want that. Because Nkrumah didn't want a situation where we are divided along religious, ethnic, or regionalist lines. Uh, so he passed. You recall 1956, when, or three months after 1954 elections, NLM was born as also a party for the Kans and the rest of them. We don't want that. We have come this far. So I believe that uh, politics is nothing but a contest of ideas. If you don't have ideas, uh, I believe that you should find ideas or you stay out of politics. I believe Mr. Alan Martin, I have no doubt in my mind, he's a man of ideas. So he can do better than resorting to this cheap type of politics. I'm afraid I don't mm. support that. So, so in other words, you are expecting an apology from him, one. And I then am two... expecting that. Okay, right. Uh, because it makes nonsense of the alliance he wants to form with the other group. If right. you read the press release <clears throat> that he churned out, one of it was to find, uh, to establish all-inclusive government. Or inclusive when or from the word go you have divided the society why are you going to get an inclusive government he was also trying to find uh, to establish uh, get that uh, alliance form with a view to uh, you know restore some of our lost you know uh, virtues and values and all that that he said to the effect that there is divis divisiveness within the, the body politics yes what is more divisive than what he has done I okay. believe that it made nonsense of the whole press <clears> release. <throat> I'm speaking um, as a scholar in this area because right. if he doesn't do that, every time he comes out, these things will be used as what raw materials to attack his campaign. You want unity, but meanwhile, you yourself, you are dividing society. You want this, but meanwhile, you are what? Uh, pre uh, preaching something different. I, I, I get your point, so, Doc, but do you think ordinary Ghanaians who are dissatisfied with the status quo, um, it, I agree with you, essentially. I agree with you. But do you think the ordinary Ghanaian voters who are more concerned about the bread and butter issues and everything in between, do you think they are so concerned about that? And, and the second bit I'll add right before we get into the papers. You know that he's teaming up with Dr. Abu Sakara Foster. Yes. Uh, they, they, are, they are calling this the Alliance for Revolutionary Change. And yes. per the polls conducted by Global Info Analytics in recent times, they have about, I mean, 7%. 7%. Now, we know, you know the trajectory better than I do when it comes to politics and smaller parties massing up together. You might probably have to go to the days of Ego and then uh, the other one, uh, Guzitano, you know, yeah. before you can get any minuscule, meaningful uh, political inroads made by any such uh, organization. But a 7% turnout, even if it were 5%, 5% can determine who does or doesn't become president. So... They sure. have a constituency then. So reactions to these two. Um, do you think the ordinary Ghanaian voter cares about what you're saying? We do because of the signal, the wrong signal it sends. But do you think the ordinary voter cares? And what do you think this Alliance for Revolutionary Change uh, could do in election 2020? The ordinary voter doesn't care a hoot about some of these things. Of course, if you mm -hmm. get uh, people who care, uh, there are only a few people. But I'm saying that uh, you and I know the implications that it has for this country. And that is why we are sounding the alarm bells now. So uh, we don't want a situation <clears throat> that because our people uh, cannot, excuse my language, read in between the lines and then, you know, uh, make informed judgment on some of these things. Uh, they consider 
uh, the economic survivor, paramount than any other thing. You cannot take them for granted, and you cannot take this state for granted, and you cannot go on this trajectory because at the end of the day, this can create problems for us. And what is the essence of politics? Is to make life better for every human being. If this will not make life better for us, I'm afraid you need to forget about it. Uh, the alliance, yes, and then the report from uh, Info Analytics, right? Yes, I'm not here to rubbish the report and all that, but it's interesting for them to point out that, you know, seven, they are going to get about 7%. Um, there's a little difficulty here for me, because if you look so, at... Oh, so let me clarify, that is as of a recent poll they conducted, yes, that yes. Of, of the number polled, if we were voting yes. probably at the time, you know, yes. per the voting patterns, they would be securing about 7%. Let, yes, let me just yes. clarify even, that. Even there, even there, there's a little... Uh, it's interesting, interesting in the sense that if you look at Ghana, the smaller parties, if you put the average together, the study that we did from 1992 to 2020, none has gone up to 5%. Remember, if you want to lead this country, you have to go beyond the 50 percent sent uh, threshold. So it's a tall order. So um, look at all the parties, their strengths cannot even mm, get to 5%. So you are talking about an individual. Remember that Mr. Chermating, even though he's popular and all that, he's a first timer relative to presidential elections in this country. And so he's going as what? As an independent candidate. It, there, is a, there are more challenges for him because of one. The, the system of government that we have, uh, electoral system we have, the first past the post system. You are not going to have, a, you are either going to have a landslide victory or at worst, when there is what, a second round, then the tie is broken at the second round. So uh, I am not sure that an independent candidate will be able to what, go through this fog and then uh, come out successfully uh, with even, even if you have not uh, being elected as a president, you get 7%. Yeah. That's a difficulty. Because second factor is that there is what the two-party system, which are very strong in this country, the CPP tradition and the Danko Buzia tradition, very, very strong. So there is no way that a third force, uh, in quotes, can marshal forces to be able to garner that type of votes. Um, you know, it will not happen. It will not. The best you can do is that you will perform and tie your apron string with other political parties to be able to push the election, the election to a second round. That is a possibility. Right. But you, you know, getting about 7% that one, that, that's difficult to take. It's difficult. But Dr. Kwame Sassanti, I must agree with you that we need an apology. I remember Courage Nobi, who speaks for Movements for Change, was here. We had this conversation and he, you know, he tried to play semantics that he's just asking that we vote for someone who has Christian values. Even the chairman for the National Peace Council condemned it. Dorian Dr. Edujimpi condemned that, you know, part of his speech, calling for Christians to vote for a Christian leader. But let's get into the newspapers, starting with the Ghanaian Times. On the front page of the Ghanaian Times, we have addressing housing deficits, new district housing program to take off by end of year, according to Paul Nkrumah. And Shraj wants criminal offences amendment bill 2022 assented to ban witchcraft accusation. A Jusso constituency by election by April 30th, according to the EC. And Payak pushes for revision of 41 year old law establishing the GNPC. Let's get into the paper now. On page nine, let me first do the story about the new district housing program to take off by end of year, according to the minister designate Kojo Ponkrumah. A new district housing program to help address the country's 1.8 million housing deficit is scheduled to take off this year. This follows conclusion of discussions between the Ministries of Works and Housing and Finance to expand the operations of the National Homeownership Fund for the commencement of the program. The initiative will develop housing for public servants in the peri-urban areas and districts using local construction materials and blended financial costs. Now, according to the minister designates, the program, which was one of government's interventions to address Ghana's housing deficits, would also include mortgages to support buyers. Um, before I even take your thoughts on this, Benjamin and Dr. Kwame Asante, you know that I think the <coughs> biggest problem we face when it comes to housing is rent. Mm. Landlords asking for two years rent advance and mm. all that. The Ministry of Works and Housing has this initiative on uh, assisting, rent assistance. And apparently it's not that bad because people are getting uh, some supplements 
to pay their rent and all that. So what do you think about this new housing district, district housing program that's supposed to take off by end of year, which will include mortgages and all that? First of all, how are the mortgage system doing in the country? Do we have effective mortgage system to help people, you know, own homes? Young do you want like to know my, my yes, very I want candid, to know your genuine, very raw gen thoughts? Not raw, but <laughs> candid thoughts. Then you don't want to know. Tell me, what's on your mind? Because these things, mm. this is not the first time we've, we've said this, especially in this administration. Yeah. Do you remember what Baumia said about, mm. Dr. Baumia said about paying rent and all? I mean, yes. it's been said time and again. But they do about have that initiative, young, the rent assistance. How many people do you know who, who not have Not personally. I watched a document. Well, then again, it's a documentary. They, they filmed it. Those are the things. It's always opaque or at best translucent. Never transparent. Oh, this is a whole batch of people. Let's interrogate. Where are they? What do they do? Um, hopefully, they are not party members. You know, I mean, not necessarily that party members are not Ghanaian, yeah. but the stratification of it. I've heard of these things, time without number. I know and I, I interact with a lot of young people who are struggling to pay rent. Yeah. So I feel if we're solving the problem, the problem actually is dealing with rent control. Yes. Landlords. And enforcing what Laws. must be enforced. Yes. Yes. Six months maximum. People should even be able... I've heard others, you know, talk about, uh, in, in, in government, talk about the fact, look, people should be able to pay month on month where, where the possibilities are there. You get it? Especially where we find our economy. So these fanciful, and I beg, in, this morning, I'm not in a very charitable, <laughs> propagandist mood. Yeah. You will see that they affect a minuscule of the society. If you want to do something like this, do you know... And I think this is where politicians really don't act in their favor. Mm. Can you imagine what it would do if any administration, I don't care which administration, NDC, MPP, CPP, PPP, whatever, ARC, succeeded in executing a program where young people, especially those who may have just got into tertiary yeah. education or just graduated from yeah. the third tier of our educational system, had a system where right after that, they would have access, it doesn't matter, to even a studio, little place where they can start off on life, where they can dream, where they can work and do something. A little kitchenette, toilet facility, mm. all in there with, but no, they will not do that. Talk shop, nothing to show. Saglemi is rotting. Ah. I have told you about that one put up by Kufour. Mm. It took donkey years before we got to it. Once we keep up with this vicious cycle, all of this and now will just be mere talk. introducing something entirely new instead of focusing on dealing with the problem. Instead of do, dealing with the past ones, we're always introducing new ones. But I'm sorry, but I'm not infused by yes. it. Yes. What do you, what do you think yes. about this new initiative by um, the Ministry of Works and Housing? Kojo Ponkuma is not only are they trying to launch this by end of year, they want to partner with um, some real estate developers like Greda and the rest to make it more affordable for young people or for the average Ghanaian. Oh, oh and, 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 and Doc, before you come in, let me just yeah. add a very important question. Mm. How affordable is affordable? Ah. The affordable housing units they've been putting up, how many people can buy them? So again, you see the very same politicians yeah. and those in power, those who have it, going to get what is so-called affordable. Doc? I think Ben has said it all. <laughs> he has said it all. Because... Look, let's start from uh, what the Constitution says, that every government, when you come into office, and uh, government, previous government started a project, you need to continue, simply because we want to ensure value for money. Go and do audits about, um, you know, facilities that are in the bush today. Who has, you know, any presence of mind to, to, to want to do such a work? As if we did not use resources to do this. You do audit and then put the monetary figures together. You will see a whole lot that we are throwing away. Yet, those things are there and you want to start a new one. Who are you trying to deceive? You see, you don't only become a leader just because you can talk, just because you can convince people, just because you can excite people but you are a leader because of legacy. You are leaving something that will stand the test of time. Kwame Nkrumah constructed a lot of things. Mm. And today, Nkrumah is dead and gone. We are still what? Making the best use of it. 
And so is the situation for other leaders. That's what leadership is about. Referendum of your work. Where is the work? Right? You want to start these things. Who are those going to benefit from it? At the end of the day, as you know, Ben rightly said, it's going to be so expensive that it will be out of reach of the ordinary man. The very person you want to help will not have opportunity to have resources mm. to be able to buy this. It defeats the whole program. All right? And... Uh. What is more is that, look, you, the, the, the next time you see such facilities springing up, it only comes during election time, where it serves as a propaganda tool so that people will know that, yeah, there is something being cooked for them and all that. Ghanaians are well awake. We can read in between the lines. Even if our people will not be able to do, people like you and I will go to town and make sure that our people get information about this and then they can make informed decision about those who want to deceive them all right we should expose these things because mm -hmm. governance ought to be more transparent and we need to be able to serve our people with honesty at all times right right if they really mean business let them go to the bush and begin to what, develop the facilities that are already there before they talk to me about these things otherwise for me it will be nothing but a propaganda tool just to what uh, move people by themselves by their side during election. It is plain right. and simple. I wonder what it would take to get another Dr. Kwame Nkrumah or a leader who is just passionate about developing this country or moving this country forward so that the, the ordinary Ghanaian can have, can breathe. And anyway, he died without a property. It, how... He died without a property. Yeah. Went to me in Kruma's <clears throat> In Ghana here, I'm ready to go and visit there. Oh. I'll spend all my resources and travel there. And our and leaders see, have mansions all over the place, in himself. other countries, and, you yes. know, and this is what they want to do for us. And you know anyway. the interesting bit, if you read, I, I have, you know, archives, okay, Daily Graphic, Ghanaian Times, newspapers, after he was ousted, and the sort of stories that were woven, lies, basically, by <clears throat> some traditions that he had wealth, he had yeah, yeah. stolen days, he had... In, in and, other and none of that not could in be, Ghana. None of, of that could heard. ever mm. be proven. Like Doc is saying, the man died without even owning his, a home for himself. You know? Yet stories were woven... Of, I mean, Doc, you, you, have, yeah. you have followed... Yes. These. So he tells All you about how this various committees, various committees to find out what has happened. I mean... That is not to say that Nkrumah was 100% no. you know, clean in no. terms of criticisms and all that. He has all his weaknesses and all that. But at least he lived way beyond his contemporaries and he really had this country at heart. <laughs> that is a fact. But that it also tells fact. us how, how, you know, it doesn't go far when we come and sit here and criticize these governments. At the end of the day, the next government comes to power and they will still do what they want, impoverishing the country. It's simply because we are and, not doing what we are supposed to do. We, the people, all that we have is that we listen to them, the deceivers, vote them out. Hmm. That is your weapon. What else do you have? Right. Dr. But if at the election, you, you pander to what? You know, patrifications and grat uh, gratifications and the rest of them. You will lose out when they bring what? Uh, you know, uh, Maggie Cube to influence you. Hmm. Just to quote Kennedy and Japan and the rest of them. God just help to, us all. They bring mattress we to you <laughs> and then... You they should change and sometimes yes 200 cities but we have to get into the i'll just do some quick headlines on uh, in the ghanaian times newspaper and then move on we have just about 10 minutes to go shraj wants criminal offenses amendment bill 2022 are centered to to ban witchcraft accusation a just so constituency by election by april 30th and payak pushes for revision <coughs> of 41 year old law establishing gnpc um those are just some headlines and Kyptic introduces three new programs to enhance leadership skills in security organizations. I'll do just the headlines for uh, the Custodian newspaper, and then, Benjamin, you can do yours as well. On the front page, Mahama is a threat to free senior high school. There's a story about a JSO by-election from Jean Mensah is here, scheduled for April 30th. Ghana moves to host 2026 Commonwealth Games. Um, and two agencies save... 836 million Ghana cities by digitalization. That is according to Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. 
Benjamin, if you want to react to that last story about 386 million saved by digitalization, that is what Dr. Baumia is saying. I think it was at the leading justice presser when he said that digitalization is really the way to go because that's how much digitalization has helped us on the back of ghost names in controller in the you know accounts because with the Ghana card you are there, can are there, see are there currently no ghost names <laughs> even question, at the finance ministry Baumia even himself. at the finance ministry <laughs> yeah the the epitome mm. of where you would expect that there's diligence how, how long ago did we not have ghost names who had been taking 8,000, 15,000, 20,000. Let's, let's stop the talk. Mm. Everywhere across the world, digitization and digitalization mm. are prominent. Yeah. They are the way to go. Um, he says we've saved that. The devil is always in the detail. Yes. That's the breakdown. Yeah. Um, very quickly, with the Daily Guide newspaper and the New Finder newspapers, uh, I want to focus briefly, but, but I'll get to those ones last. Funny Face granted 120,000 Ghana CD bail. I'm, I'm trying to avoid, I mean, it's, it's getting too often, so I'm not going to go into that story. You want to get the details, get into the Daily Guide, grab a copy for yourself. Um, EC sets a just by election April 30 as NPP holds primary April uh, 13. And let me just say here that they say our leaders reflect us, and I'm not mentioning anybody's name. But I also look at some people who are putting themselves up and I'm asking myself, this country, mm. I'm sure you know where I'm going, but me more BAD. Sometimes the caliber of people who are even able to put themselves up. <laughs> anyway, um, then four more in court over missing penis. I, I spoke about that. The story's on page six. But where I want to focus briefly, Ghana to return to 5% GDP growth. Uh, that's according to the World Bank recently. The projection was 2.9%, just above the 2.8% uh, that had been projected. And the thinking is that by 2026, we could get to 5% growth. But it also tells you how far, really, we have fallen. You know, the fall has been steep. And uh, now we're trying to... I think this should send signals, not just to Ghana, but every other country that, look, get your act right. Now, even our cocoa. We are bleeding badly. Cocoa farmers are saying, because between the last time and now, cocoa prices have gone up over 200%, costing more than copper, okay? Almost about $10,000 per ton. And yet, the increment has been 50%. And some are saying they are going to convert their farms into other things. I found it interesting recently reading that Burkina Faso, apparently for decades, do you know what? They call something red gold. Do you know what it is? What is it? Strawberries. They cultivate, in the Sahel, they cultivate strawberries. And I'm asking myself, and, and guess one of the biggest countries importing from them, Ghana. Yeah. So some of the strawberries you will find in the supermarkets, and they are not from Europe or anywhere, they are from Burkina Faso. Can we do same? Can we add, they are producing about 2,000 tons per year. Even the cocoa we have, we are not dealing with properly. To talk of other, we just aren't oriented. But I'll wrap with free SHS will collapse under Mahama. And, and sometimes eh, <clears throat> I ask myself when politicians, especially MDC and MPP, sometimes they say outrageous things, right? When someone says something like this, what is the basis? He says, oh, in the past, there have been claims that this and that. When the person has over time said, this is not going to happen. I mean, technically, how do you think someone will come and put an end to free SHS. As for the problems, they are myriad, but still we must keep it and fine tune it. I don't think paying for everybody makes any sense, but the administration thinks it does. If someone says that, I, I don't know, but um, Doc, maybe you have uh, different opinions on, on these stories. Yes, I will, I will start with the, uh, the digitization and uh, the mm. benefit we have derived from this. Mm. There's no doubt about that. Uh, it's fine, and uh, it's in line with what government ought to do at all times, that be innovative, and then you take advantage of the existing uh, technological advancement, and then you make life better for everybody. So, yes, government has done well. And then they touch on something about what? Ghost names, that yeah. they've cleared all of them and all that. Mm. We hope it is so, mm -hmm. uh, because I know Mr. Yalsafo spent all his time when he was in office before time, removing ghost names when he was a finance minister and all that. We still saw ghosts, you know, emerging. 
it tells us that there's something we are not doing right. So if the vice president is saying that we've been able to reduce, uh, remove them, and that we've been able to save about 380 million. No, 836 to... million. All right. Yeah. All right. Right. That's a big one. Yeah. But I want him to also reconcile this thing with $58 million that we spent on a hole, digging a hole. I want him to reflect on that and let's see whether we are ensuring value for money. At one point, we are making so much because we, we have cleared the ghost names in our payroll. Brilliant idea. Kudos. But what about $58 million mm. that we can only show that it exists in the name of what? A whole. Where is the cathedral? That needs to be what? Addressed. And then the issue of cocoa. Uh, I am a son of a cocoa farmer. I work throughout my life uh, as a cocoa farmer. My uncle, my mother, my father. So when you talk about cocoa, it's so dear to my heart. More so when it's the mainstay of this country. <laughs> All right. Cocoa farmers are complaining that world uh, market price has gone up and they don't have a fair share of that. Uh, it tells you that uh, people in government don't learn from the past experience. These were some of the factors uh, that contributed to the formation of NLM and all that. I thought that if come this way, they will learn from this so that you help the farmer to get something that is, you know, he's entitled to, that's all. So you encourage them to produce more. Recently, we have seen the threat that Galamse activities is opposing to what? the cultivation of cocoa in this country. Mm. And you cannot compound the situation when you don't give them their deal. What is also surprising is what Ben talked about, the cashew, uh, that, uh, you know, strawberry, strawberry yeah. we are getting from Burkina Faso and the rest of them. Uh, it tells us that we are not serious as a people. I'm sorry to say it, but I have to be blunt, all right? I was a reporter in parliament. When parliament to um, pass a law that we're going to uh, get resources and cultivate uh, cashew nuts in Bronga Hafo uh, and other regions so that we can make the best out of this. What has happened to that? What has happened to that? I want us to look at these things, not only passing laws, but I want our legislators to also help us to be like what Americans <coughs> call what? They say the <coughs> legislature is unique and ask them, what is unique about American, American legislature? It's when they pass a law, they go out there to see that the law works. Mm. I will urge my parliamentarians in that mm -hmm. uh, from time to time let them visit us out there and see whether all the effort they are putting into making laws the laws work that is all that i can say right but before we go up go before we wrap this up when doc was talking something came to mind when if i asked you what is the Ghanaian dream what would you say it is because I, I, you mentioned america know. and immediately thought the american dream what is the Ghanaian dream for young people in this country what um, is it that we are aspiring to when we what, reach a certain age or milestone? What do we hope to get from this? I, I have posed that question before. For the sake of time, I'll be very brief. Yeah. Uh, there's probably none, um, unless you, you, you come from a certain stock and, um, you know, I, I don't know. What would you say? I think it's to Japa. Oh, the Ghanaian okay, dream. Yeah. Yeah. The Ghanaian dream is to, to leave the country. the country. Yes, yeah, because yeah. we've lost hope. Anyway, we have to wrap up. But why today. should we lose hope? Why should we, ah. if our leaders get the basis right? Everything is <clears> here, <throat> and yet we are poor. Look yeah. at resources. Now we are getting in minerals we have not even had before. Yes, we are hearing that so, they exist so accommodating. All right. According we have to our all president. the resources, <laughs> except that our leaders, it's not only that they are bankrupt of ideas, but they are wicked. They don't want to fix the problem. Because the wrong things that they do, they benefit from them. We should tell them in their faces. Yeah. Well, right. that's how we're going to have to sew it up. Um, and Doc, we're grateful for your time. Dr. Kwame Asante, a political scientist and also director of the Center for European Studies at the University of Ghana. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. All right. Sweetie. Yeah. Uh, as for that dream, it will take a long time uh, to come. Because what are you going to aspire yeah. to? You are likely going to face doom. So, look, I've said it. Energy experts have said it. Whoever takes power from 2025, we are likely to it. face another bout. It's not of, going away anytime. Uh, doom so. You, you get it. So what are you, as a young person, this rent thing, you are likely not going to benefit. You are likely going to meet power outages. 
um, you want to jackpot that one crowd. They say that now the passports prices and I mean you are you are in a quandary ah. from all angles. Yeah, hitting so you what from are you from all angles? About? Like fuel prices, cost of living. What, roads, what are you going to aspire to? Benjamin, roads. Well, this segment always brought to you by Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic, and uh, they're offering you, if you're a man, prostate screening uh, for free. If you're a woman, fertility screening for free. Reach out to them at any of their branches across Pintex, opposite the Shell signboard, Kumasi Kronomabwehia, behind the Angel Educational Complex. There's Takradi Anaji State, Tema Committee 22, Tichiman Hanswa, and Asiyah Manzama. Their call lines 0244-867-068 or 0274-2343. Two, one. End point homeopathic clinic, the mm. end to chronic uh, disease. We have sports coming up shortly. Do stay. <music>